Hey guys! As I mentioned in my Mulan tutorial, I believe, I wanted to do a video about the tools and materials I use when making the dolls. But after thinking about it, I realized that the majority of that video was going to end up being about the fibers I use for the hair on my dolls and fur on my animals. And so I decided to divide it into a couple of videos. And this video is going to be just about the fur or fibers I use. I also mentioned that I was waiting for a couple of vegan alternatives in the mail and although I haven't actually used those for any project yet because I just got them in the mail today, I did do a couple of swatches and I'm gonna do my best to really show you what they look and feel like and hopefully that'll be helpful. Also just before I get started, I am going to be linking a couple of websites in the info box where I've ordered some of this. The websites I order from are usually always UK based and I'm not completely sure if they ship to countries outside of Europe but in general what I would really recommend you to do is just go onto Google and search for the type of fiber you're looking for and then find a seller or website near you. So the first type of fiber I have is mohair which is a goat fiber. This is the first type of fiber I ever ordered when I started making my miniatures and it's still to this day my favorite type of fiber to use for the hair on the miniature dolls. It is the least soft or malleable fiber I have and I really don't like using it for animals. I used it for my Saint Bernard tutorial and for my Rottweiler but it's just too stiff to really look good especially if you're doing very short fur so for dolls it's okay I like it it looks very natural and I like how it feels to work with but I wouldn't recommend it for animals I ordered all of this except from this one bundle back in 2011 and 2012 and unfortunately I can't share the website with you because it no longer exists the lady who owned that website and the farm has since then retired, but mohair is pretty commonly available and if you go onto eBay or Google you will be able to find other sellers and websites. The website I'm linking in the info box which is called Scottish Fibers does have mohair and that is where I ordered this bundle. I'm not sure about their color selection but otherwise you can always dye it yourself. This website does offer a variety of dyes as well and they aren't really that expensive so it's worth checking out. Next I have a box which has a couple of different types of fibers and hair and I'm going to be starting out with this one. I'm tempted to saying that this is the black sheep of the family but I feel like that's too much of a pun because it's Tibetan lamb. Um, but the reason why I say that is because this is the only type of fiber I have and the only bag of it which is not cruelty free. This fur is still attached to the skin or leather of the animal and so, you know, I understand that a lot of people don't want to use this. I bought it because I thought I could use it for a specific project back in 2010. It ended up not really working out and I haven't used it for any of my projects don't think I ever will and I'm not gonna be buying any more of it because I've since then found that I can get the same result with the mohair and the other fibers but I just want to show you because it is a fiber that I have. Next is the reason why I have to keep putting a disclaimer in my animal tutorials and that is the Angora fibers I use. Again, I got this from the same website as the mohair back in 2011 or 2012, so unfortunately they're out of business, she has retired. But please stop bashing me for using this because you don't necessarily have to hurt the animals to get this. There are places and people who harvest the angora fibers using cruelty-free methods. With that being said, this is my absolute favorite white fiber to use for animals. It's very white and clean looking, very soft, the fibers are super fine and dense and it just it gives a really really beautiful result. I don't recommend using it for the dolls just because it is so fine and dense and it's going to end up looking like you put a cotton pad on their head. 
I then have a variety of synthetic fibers, uh, which are just hair extensions, really cheap hair extensions I found in local shops and eBay. Now, for the colored ones, I got them because they were cheap and I figured that one day I might need, you know, just a streak of one color to put in a teenager's hair or something like that. Um, and as for the black, brown and white ones, I got those specifically to use for the animals because they make the perfect whiskers. The last type of fiber in here is alpaca. Uh, the grey and the white one here is just normal alpaca. The small bags I have over here is baby alpaca. And then this bag is alpaca mixed with silk fibers. Having the silk mixed in with the natural fibers just gives a nice sheen without it looking too dramatic or fake. I used it for the mane and tail on my unicorn, which you can find the tutorial for on my channel. When comparing the normal alpaca and the baby alpaca, I don't really think there is much of a difference. They are both very nice and soft. I have used this grey one for a miniature cat and it worked perfectly fine. It also works well for making doll hair. I used this on an elderly lady I made back in 2011. And it's just an overall nice, versatile fiber. Next is Merino, which is a sheet fiber. And just to give you an idea of how much I love this type of fiber. I actually have two bins and most of it was purchased from this website. And then for the larger bundles, I believe I got them from the Scottish Fibers website. May have gotten it from the same website, but I think it was the Scottish Fibers. This is also a very fine, soft and malleable fiber and it's my personal favorite type of fiber to use for animals. I don't really love it for dolls just because it has a more fussy look. I've been wondering whether you might be able to straighten it with a hair straightener to get a more sleek look, but I'm from a very strange species of girl who does not own a hair straightener, so I haven't been able to test out that theory. There are three reasons why I have these three large, I think, 100 gram bundles. And that is, first off, as I said, this is my favorite type of fiber to use for animals and I just don't want to run out. Secondly, this natural white, which is kind of an off-white color, is such a useful, such a beautiful color and I use it a lot. So I want to make sure I have enough of it. And lastly, because Although the website where I got these colors and the other websites I've seen offer a large variety of different shades, I haven't been able to really get as many shades as I would like. And I know already from making the German Shepherd, I didn't really have the color I needed for that fur. And so I decided to just get some dyes and that way be able to dye it myself and make custom colors. The last box I have is the man-made fibers, I guess you'd say. So the fibers that are not actual animal fur. First off, I have viscose, which is a fiber that's often made from bamboo. I got these a couple of weeks ago and I used the black for my Mulan doll and the blue for my Coraline doll. As you might be able to see, these are in much smaller quantities than the other bags of fur and fibers I've shown and also in comparison to these. Of course I can't speak for all websites and sellers, but I have purchased from two different sellers on eBay and they both came in fairly small quantities. I don't remember the exact prices, but I think these are the most expensive fibers I have. The sellers I got them from did sell them specifically for using with miniature dolls and pull-it dolls. So, of course, you are getting really great quality and that is what you're paying for. 
However, because of the price point, I wouldn't really use this for making any animals because you do need quite a lot more compared to when adding hair to a doll. So for these new fibers I got, I'm going to start out with the one I think is a vegetarian alternative more so than a vegan alternative since I can't really see how this could be vegan and that is milk protein fiber. Now I was very curious as to how this was made and I looked it up online. From what I could read it's a protein found in milk and different types of milk have different concentrations of this protein. The protein is then dissolved and other substances are added and it's then extruded into these individual pieces of hair or fibers. I will admit that at that point I just stopped reading and I ultimately decided that it is made using witchcraft. From what I can tell it's a very nice soft and malleable fiber. It does look shiny which these man-made or plant-based fibers tend to do but it's not so overly shiny that it will look too fake to use for an animal and it definitely would work for dolls as well. One thing I can't say much about though since I haven't used these for any projects yet is how they would apply if you were to cut them into flocking powder. The reason why I say that is because that is what I found to be the biggest problem with the mohair. Not only because the mohair was too stiff but I also didn't really like how it looked because the hair was more shiny and since these man-made fibers are more shiny, I'm not sure if that would be a problem. Next is bamboo fiber. As I mentioned, viscose is often made from bamboo, so this is basically the same, although this is a much more rough variety because this was sold as what they call loose form, um, so it hasn't really been prepared for being spun into yarn. These fibers are also very nice and soft, basically, as I said, the same as the viscose. Main difference, other than the fact that they look more rough, since they haven't been prepared for being spun, is the fact that the fibers are much shorter. I would say these fibers are about an inch, whereas with the viscose, I bought some that is 42 centimeters, I think, and that of course can also have to do with the price point. However, this bag was super cheap, it was two pounds for 100 grams. So if you want to use viscose for animals, this is definitely something I would look into. One thing I do want to mention while I remember it is when it comes to styling these man-made fibers, compared to styling the natural fibers, there is a slight difference. I found that if the viscose has been scrunched up in a bag like this, it's really easy to straighten out and it'll look nice and straight after going through it with your fingers a couple of times. Whereas if that was a natural fiber, it would be much more likely to just hold that shape. And although that's definitely a positive aspect, when it comes to straightening the hair, that unfortunately also means that these man-made fibers won't necessarily hold a curl as well. Next is soybean fiber. This is also really nice and soft and a very fine fiber. It does look shiny and a bit too shiny for my taste when it comes to animals, but definitely not something you couldn't use. I do think it's very similar to the milk protein fiber. Main difference, I would say, just from this first impression, is the sheen. And so I wouldn't necessarily use it for all types of animals, but if you're doing a certain breed of dog or a cat that does have a more shiny coat of fur, I think this would look really neat. I might not personally use these for animals unless I were to make a breed of a cat or dog that does have that shiny coat of fur, but I could definitely see myself using them for miniature dolls. The last one I have to show you is tinsel, which is made from wood pulp. 
In some ways, I feel like comparing this to the mohair, it does have the qualities of the other man-made fibers, so it's very silky feeling, it looks soft and very shiny, but it also feels more stiff than the other man-made fibers. I don't think I would use this for any animals, but it would be great to use for miniature dolls. Also, I'm not sure if it's just the way the light catches some of the individual strands, but it almost has a slight sparkle to it, which makes me kind of think of fairy tales, so I can't help but think it would be great to use for dolls. One of the last things I'm going to talk about is the dyes I use. And these ones are made for silk, but they also work really well for the merino and the mohair. And I've also dyed some different types of fabric using these. I bought them because I want to be able to do custom cars and I would definitely recommend having some sort of dye just in case you need a specific color. The only thing is that I'm not sure how well these work with the man-made or plant-based fibers because I do believe you're supposed to use acid-based dyes for those. But if I try it out, I will definitely give you an update in a tutorial. And lastly, because I always get questions about which glue I use, any good white craft glue should work well for this, but the one I use is Aileen's Tacky Glue. And the one I prefer using is the quick dry.